Hey everyone, on this episode, we're gonna have a lot of fun bending wood and making this LED chandelier. The first thing we need to do for this project is to make a steam bending setup. We're gonna use Rockler's steam bending kit, which comes with everything you need. The reservoir that's powered, you got your hose for the steam transfer, the coupling, all the hardware if you wanna build a wooden box with a latch that opens to let the wood in and out. But we're actually just gonna use a PVC pipe and that'll work with the Rockler kit too. With the Rockler kit, a PVC steam box takes about 20 minutes to make, if that. I started by drilling a half inch hole in a PVC end cap so I can attach Rockler's brass hose fitting to the four inch PVC pipe. You need to be able to open the other end of the box to insert and remove wood and then close it off while steaming. To make a removable end cap, I used PVC primer and glue to attach a female threaded coupling to the pipe. This accepts a male threaded end cap, which I can remove when I need to get wood in or out of the steam chamber. I then cut down some scrap lumber to make support blocks for the PVC box to rest on. We've got our supports cut, one from a two by four, one from a two by six, so there'll be a slope to the PVC pipe. This will allow water to drain down as it condensates, but also allow steam to rise up so the whole pipe gets filled. I then drilled out holes every six inches along the length of the PVC. These holes allow for half inch dowels to be inserted through the pipe. The dowels will hold the wood in the middle of the pipe so that all sides of the wood are evenly steamed. Off camera, I drilled a drain hole at the lower end of the pipe for water to escape from as the steam condenses in the pipe. To finish it off, I drilled a small hole for a cheap meat thermometer that will tell me the temperature inside the box. Whew. Long day here. I am sweaty, but all good. It's now time to route out the channels for the LED strips in this piece of maple. To do that, I'm just going to use a plunge router. And I'm going to do it in the wood while it's still flat before bending it just because I think that'll be easier. I'm not even sure how I would go about cutting an even channel down the middle of a bent piece of wood. I started by routing a three quarter inch channel that was one eighth inch deep and then cut a deeper one half inch wide channel along the same center line. This two-step process creates a deeper channel for the LED strips with a rabbet around it. The rabbet will support 1 8 inch white acrylic that I'll be using to diffuse the LED strips later. I then used my table saw to split the board into three 1 and a half inch wide pieces, one for each light bar. I routed the three LED channels in one board before cutting the smaller strips for the light bars on the table saw because I thought the router might be difficult to hold flat on thinner pieces. Ripping down the last strip, I had a really scary kickback moment, but fortunately, I always stand to the side when I cut a thin strip like this, so nobody got hurt. I then moved on to making some two-sided forms for bending the wood strips into what I guess i describe as a flattened S shape. I cut the forms on my X-carb, which does a great job for these types of forms. However, I don't want to spend too much time on these since, well, you'll see in a few minutes why. I put the wood into the steam box and during the 90 minute steaming, I screwed one side of the form to my assembly table, thinking I'd be able to clamp the other side on quickly, using clamps to bend the wood against the first side.
The first bend went pretty smoothly, but when I tried to bend the wood back the other way to add the other side of the form, well, this is embarrassing. Adult temper tantrums are not a good look on me or anyone. Bright side though, after seeing myself on film, I'm pretty sure it won't be happening again. So round one with the curly maple was a failure or what I like to call a learning experience. And I really think it had to do a lot with it being maple and with the grain of the wood having a lot of run out in it. So I went out and picked up some pieces of white oak that have a really straight grain. Now this is kiln dried, which isn't ideal. Green lumber would have been better or air dried even, but this is all I could get locally quickly. So I think we've got a shot. We're gonna see if it'll work with the kiln dried white oak with a really nice straight grain with very little run out. I then cut the light bars to length at my miter saw and it was time to give steam bidding a third try. The oak was definitely bending a little bit easier than the maple, but on the bend back, I started to see a little cracking. I learned my lesson though and kept my cool. I realized the crack wasn't too bad this time and decided to try stabilizing it with super glue. I also decided to test a technique where you just use a plastic bag as your steam chamber instead of a wood box or PVC pipe. And I thought it best to test it out on the piece that was already cracked so I didn't waste another new piece of wood if it didn't work. So I think we have a winner that's gonna work for these convex and concave bags. It's been a lot easier here because the bag kept the steam on it as it was being transferred over and gave you longer to get the clamps on. Um, so I'm gonna try this with some bigger bags for the whole piece tomorrow on the other two. And I think we can salvage this one and make it work with a little bit of super glue um, on those cracked parts. I think we're on the home stretch. So let's get some sleep and try again to get it 100% right tomorrow. I shared this steam bending saga on my Instagram stories as it was happening. Izzy Swan saw the stories and sent me a message suggesting that it sometimes helps to soak kiln dried wood overnight before steaming. Izzy is a mad genius when it comes to anything related to wood, so I definitely took this advice to heart. At this point, while researching how to improve my bending process, I also watched this video on the Create channel by Andre Gobel, where he makes this incredible steam bent bench, and it gave me an idea to tweak my process. Side note, if you haven't seen that video, link in the description, go watch it, you'll thank me, it's awesome. At any rate, I decided that I would replicate this skateboard wheel bending jig that Andre uses in that video. The jig is really simple, it's just two skateboard wheels, and you use a steel cross brace piece to attach them and then use a couple lag bolts or screws to bolt that down to a sturdy workbench. So I'll link to the wheels I use, but there are tons on Amazon. The main thing is you want them to be nice and flat and hard and you want them to be tall enough that your workpiece can rest against them. I went with 70 millimeters. With these tweaks, I was back to steaming with high hopes, and fortunately the Rockler steam kit was easy to adapt to use with the bag and got the temperature up to 210 Fahrenheit. With the skateboard wheel jig, you are freeform bending, just using your body weight to bend the wood as you gradually work it through the wheels. As I bent the wood, I would screw in stop blocks to hold the bend. Once I had a bend I like, I let the piece sit overnight so the curve could set. And then came back the next morning to repeat the process and make the second bend in the other direction. One of the main benefits to this approach is keeping the bag on and continuing to steam the wood while bending. It gave me a lot more time to do each bend, which is a huge benefit when you're working alone. There are some drawbacks to this freeform approach, however. It wouldn't be ideal if you're trying to achieve an exact radius or make repeated identical curves. For this project, however, some variation between light bars was totally fine, so it worked great. Another suggestion from Izzy was using aluminum flat bar as a brace while bending. I didn't have any handy, so I tried using PVC trim as a brace during this process, 
It helped a bit, but I still got some small cracks, so I think aluminum definitely would have been a better choice if you're trying this approach. So I'm about to demold the last and final bend on this project, and I finally got one that bent perfect. It didn't crack at all. There's nothing to patch up, and I'm pretty happy about that. So let's get over to finishing off these lights and getting the LEDs installed in them. Since this is a chandelier and it will hang from the ceiling, no one's going to be looking at it too close up. With this in mind, I decided to try to hide the cracks in the first two light strips. I started by using some CA glue to stabilize the cracks. I then rubbed oak wood putty in all the cracks, let it sit up for about 20 minutes, and then sanded everything flush. I was really happy how well the putty hid the cracks. I really don't think anyone's going to notice unless I point it out to them. I'm using 1 8 inch white acrylic sheet to diffuse the LEDs. I picked the sheet up on eBay and cut strips of it on my table saw with a fine finished blade. I made multiple cuts and snuck up on the width of the LED channel so it would press fit into the channel. I then used my disc sander to round off the ends of the acrylic strips so that they'd fit nicely into the rounded channel ends. I made a last minute design decision to round off the ends of the wood light bars to match the curvature of the LED channel ends. I then used my disc sander to finish sanding to the line. I could then do a test fit of the acrylic strips into the LED channel and I was happy to see that there was a nice pressure fit. I also tried bending the acrylic by heating it up with a torch and pressing it into the curved LED channel while it's still hot. So the wood was essentially a mold. Now this worked just fine, but I didn't really see any advantage functionally or aesthetically since the acrylic was flexible enough and just pressure fit in without being bent to shape. So I nixed the acrylic bending for the other two light bars. I then gave the light bars a final sanding up to 220 grit before applying Maker Brand Simple Finish to the wood. I used my Rockler bench cookies to lift the light bars off the workbench while applying finish. There are so many different applications for bench cookies. I use them just about every day in my workshop. If you don't have a set, then just do yourself a favor, go pick one up. You'll be amazed how often you end up using them. All right, before we install the LEDs, I would just want to make clear, I'm not an electrician. You should definitely consult an electrician if you want to do something like this and consult them, make sure everything is up to code and safe. Okay, so on that note, talking about heat and stressing, again, I'm not an electrician, so this is just what I'm doing, not what anyone else out there should do. I'm planning to come back later and put some 16th inch aluminum bar underneath the LEDs to help dissipate the heat. I've got that on order though, so I don't have it here yet, and I want to get these hooked up, so temporarily, I'm just going to use some aluminum foil tape in the channels. If there's any electricians out there, maybe you can leave a comment and let me know your thoughts on whether what I'm thinking is along the right lines or what you might do in a situation like this light to help dissipate heat from the LED strips. I then drilled holes that would hold the suspension wire connectors and for the power wires to get into the LED channel. Next, I chiseled out the inside of the channel a bit deeper, right around the entry point for the wiring. This provides some space behind the LED strips for the wires to enter. Otherwise, there would be a noticeable hotspot here due to the wires pushing the LED strip closer to the diffuser. So usually people just wire up LED strips by connecting power and ground at the end of the strip. Because, well, when you buy a strip, that's where the connector usually is, and that makes sense, right? Well, you can actually connect power and ground on these 12-volt LED strips anywhere on the strip, and there's actually some advantages to connecting them in the middle of this strip. When you supply power to an LED strip, each LED it crosses is going to cause some voltage drop. And the lower the voltage, the less bright the LED will be. So when it kind of spreads out 
from the middle outwards, the longest run of LEDs is going to be shorter than if it has to go across the whole strip to get to the LED at the other end. That means the LEDs will run more efficiently, dissipate less heat, et cetera, et cetera. It's a good thing to do when you can. And in this case, it's again to provide another aesthetic benefit because we can drop the wire for the power, not exactly in the middle, but close to it, and put it right next to our hanging kit so that the wire for the power runs up right next to our hanging cord and is less noticeable when you look at the light. I use CA glue to attach the LED strips. Now, while LED strips do have adhesive backing and I used it, it's been my experience that the adhesive backing will always fail over time. I soldered the power and ground wires to the contacts on the LED strip and then covered them with hot glue to give the connections a bit more strength and electrical isolation. So this is one of those projects where I started with a rough idea, but I didn't really know what the final design was exactly gonna be. So what I've done is just taken three scraps of plywood here and attached these sort of quick release ceiling mounts that allow the wires from the lights to be quickly connected, disconnected. And now with these three separate mounts, kind of like marionettes for the light, I can just attach those to a single sort of base piece, try different shapes and arrangements of the lights really quickly, hold it up, see how it looks, until I find something I like. So let's play around and figure that out. So just in case you're wondering, this is just a temporary mount so I can show how it hangs and looks for this. I've got a final mount designed and in my head, but I wanted to run everything by an electrician before I go through the trouble of building it, just to make sure that the final install I have in my mind will work like I think it will. All right, I like how this is looking. So I think we're just gonna do a temporary install for now. Get the beauty shots so we can wrap this video up. And if you do wanna check out the permanent install after I call an electrician, then make sure to follow me on Instagram because I'll be sharing it over there. Now this one was a bit of a struggle, but in the end, I'm really happy how this steam bent chandelier came out. I hope you enjoyed it and are inspired to go try some steam bending on your own and hopefully avoid some of the mistakes that I made. That's it for this time, and I'll see you next time.